this is Valerie Gedge with a tutorial on how to import your photos into Lightroom, both new photos from your memory card and older photos you may have stored on your computer. First off, before I get to the import process, I wanted to give you a brief explanation of what Lightroom is and how it works. Lightroom, as you may know, is image management and editing software designed specifically for photographers. It helps you manage and edit large amounts of images in a logical workflow. One of its most powerful features is batch processing, where you can apply specific settings to a group of images and still be able to make adjustments to individual photos. Lightroom revolves around a database called a catalog that keeps a record of everything that happens with your images, where they're stored in your hard drive, all the metadata, and any changes you make to the images in Lightroom. One of the beauties of Lightroom is that all editing is non-destructive and all your edits are saved as text in the catalog. They aren't saved as pixel changes to your images like in Photoshop. The catalog doesn't contain the actual photos. They can be stored anywhere on your computer or even on an external drive. So before you start importing your images into Lightroom, you need to make some decisions on where you want to store your catalog and where you want to store your photos. When you first start up Lightroom, it's going to automatically create the catalog called the Lightroom 5 catalog. And it will also create a backups folder and a preview folder. And the preview folder will contain small JPEG previews of all of the images that you've imported. The default location for all of this is your main pictures folder on your hard drive under an umbrella folder called Lightroom. But you can change the location and put your catalog on an external drive. Keep in mind that if you're taking thousands of photos, pretty soon this preview folder is going to get very large, as well as your overall My Pictures folder with all of your images. If you have a desktop computer with lots of space, you could probably keep the default and go ahead and store the catalog and your images on your hard drive. But if you have a laptop, you'll most likely want to use an external drive to at least store your images because it won't be long before you run low on space, especially if you're shooting RAW. So now that you have a general overview of the catalog, we can move on to the import process. Okay, now we're ready to import some photos from your memory card. When you insert your card, click on File, Import Photos and Video, or Control-Shift-I, or down at the bottom here you can click on Import. And up at the top, you will see your source, and thumbnails of your images will appear in the center and you can use this thumbnail slider down here in the lower right to increase or decrease the size of your previews. Now by default, all images will have a check mark by them indicating that they will all be imported. You may not want to import all of your images and if that's the case, you can simply uncheck all at this um, button here at the bottom and then go ahead and select specific images for import. If you want to select, say, a whole row of images, just hold down your shift key, click on the first image, click on the last image, and then just click in one of the check boxes and they'll all be highlighted and checked for import. And if you have, say, an image here and an image there that you want to import, they're not all together in a row, then hold down the control key, click on the first image and click on the next image, and then again, make sure that the check mark box is checked, and those will also be highlighted and selected for import. Now over here on the right, under File Handling, Lightroom is going to ask you how you want Lightroom to build previews of your images. You have several options here. The default is minimal, and this uses the smallest embedded previews created by your camera, and it's not color managed. It's the fastest way to get your photos into Lightroom, and it's good for when you're importing a lot of images at once. Lightroom will render standard image size, standard size previews as they are needed during your workflow. The next option is embedded in sidecar. This shows the largest possible previews from your camera, and they will take a little bit longer to build. Standard previews are rendered directly by Lightroom, not from your camera, and they'll take a bit longer to build than the previous ones, and they'll also take up more file state space in your preview folder. One-to-one, -one, uh, these are full-size previews, 
they'll take e even longer to render during import and they'll take up a lot of disk space. So I don't recommend that you use this except um, on occasion, say there are a couple images that you need to import and you want to see right away um, super detail. But otherwise I would go with one of these other options. Um, most people either pick the standard or the minimal. And I'm going to go ahead and just leave it with the standard. Now the next one I recommend that you check, I think this is checked by default anyway, is don't import suspected duplicates, which is pretty self-explanatory. And this will help you in case you forgot to reformat your card before taking additional photos. I also recommend that you keep this checked, uh, the next one below, make a second copy. This means that Lightroom will make a second copy, a backup, of all of your imported images and they will be saved to a location that you can designate. It's always a good idea to keep a backup of a second original just in case something happens. For right now, I'm going to uncheck that, but I do recommend that you leave it checked. Next is the file renaming panel. You have the option of renaming all of your images as they're imported. You can set the file name, um, the numbering, sequence, and custom text. And some of the options here, as I mentioned, custom name, sequence, um, shoot name, etc. And you can also edit this list and create your own naming. I'm, I like to use the custom name sequence template, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And then next I can add my custom text that will be the basic uh, file name and I'm just going to call it flowers. And by default, your numbering would start with number one, but you can adjust that to anything you want. And next is an option if you want to change the case for your extensions, and I'm just leaving it at lowercase. So you can see here a sample of my basic naming sequence. The next panel are settings and options that can be applied during import. The first are develop settings, and this is handy um, in case you want to have corrections automatically applied uh, if you have a specific preset you want to use. And some of those options are um, black and white filters, specific color presets, um, special effect presets, general ones such as punch and sharpening, and, and you can also create and add your own user presets. For right now, I'm going to leave that um, as none. And then the next option is metadata. Metadata is information that's embedded with your image, like what camera was used, the settings, the file type, etc. And you can add custom metadata such as a photographer name, um, contact information, captions, copyright. Here are some of the options here, and then you can actually save them as a template for future use. Next up are keywords. When you're first importing, I recommend that you keep any keywords you add as general, and then you can add more specific keywords later when you're culling and sorting your images into collections. So for right now, I'm going to just add the general keyword flowers. And if I was going to add additional keywords, I would separate them with a comma. Now we get to the destination. And this is where you would tell Lightroom specifically where you want to save your images. And you have a couple of options here again. You can have them saved into a specific subfolder that would be created. You can organize your import into one folder or you can have them imported into individual folders by date. Um, I think that is the default import by date and I don't recommend using it, at least I don't like to use it because it's not very descriptive and if you shot on different dates you'll end up with a bunch of meaningless folders. So I find it better to create one folder, have all my images put into that one folder and then I can go later and um, sort them into collections and add additional descriptive names. So I'm going to leave this as organized into one folder. And then you select, uh, you can create a new folder 
for import or you can use an already created folder and I have one called flowers so I'm just going to import my in images there into the flowers folder and you click the import button and you're done. Next I'll show you how to import your old photos into Lightroom. Remember Lightroom doesn't move your photos, it only creates an association or a reference to them. Your photos stay where they are unless you choose to move them specifically. Okay now to import images you already have stored in your computer go to File, Import Photos and Video and select your source and I'm going to select this file here and I've got my images and I'm going to go ahead and leave these all checked and you'll see up here at the top it says add and remember that it's just simply adding these to Lightroom's library it's not physically copying them they'll stay in the original place you stored them if I had wanted to move them to a new location I could click move here and then um, put them in, into a different location but I'm just going to go ahead and add them and I'm going to leave the file handling and apply during import as is and then go ahead and click import. I hope this gives you a good overview of the import process in Lightroom. In my next tutorial I'm going to show you the various ways you can view, sort, and classify your images. If you found this tutorial helpful I'd appreciate it if you would click the like and the subscribe buttons below. Until next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Lightroom tutorial. Stay tuned for more tips and tutorials as we work our way through the Lightroom workflow. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss anything. In the meantime, go out and have fun with your camera, and I'll see you back here soon.